Ladies and gentlemen, Congressman Frank Wolf. Uh, thank you. I have seen firsthand the results of genocide. I have traveled the lands forever changed by the atrocities committed there. I have spoken with men and women who have experienced unimaginable suffering and loss. I saw it in Darfur. Ambassador Brownback and I were the first members of Congress to travel there. We came back and we urged U.S. officials to act and to call it genocide. I saw it in Bosnia. I saw a Serb-run detention facility for Bosnian Muslims. Congressman Chris Smith, one of the greatest members I ever served with, we went to Vukovar together, and weeks later it fell, and everyone that Chris and I had met with had been murdered. I saw it in Rwanda, which the U.S. and the West ignored, despite the desperate pleas for help, where hundreds of thousands were murdered. I saw it in northern Iraq. I visited Nineveh Plains, and where the ISIS had committed genocide against Christians and Yazidis. Yazidi parents wept over their daughters. We just heard the previous testimony. Wept over their daughters, brutally abducted by ISIS fighters. Christian leaders lamented the destruction of holy sites and the purging of entire communities from the ancient lands they had inhabited from antiquity. I saw it in Nigeria. Boko Haram has committed genocide against Christians, and there's genocidal activity by Fulani militants. A recent UN report numbered the deaths in Nigeria at 350,000 at the end of 2020, and the genocide continues. I saw it in China in my visit to Tibet, where Buddhist monks and nuns have been setting themselves on fire to protest a cultural genocide by China. In China, the government detains, harasses, and imprisons Catholic bishops and Protestant house church leaders. The Falun Gong face severe persecution, and there are continuous reports of organ harvesting. Most staggering is the campaign being waged against the Uyghur Muslim population. More than a million Uyghurs have been placed in detention camps. Former detainees report of torture, rape, and sterilization. There's a video that I'm sure many of you saw of hundreds of Uyghurs blindfolded and handcuffed being herded into trains. Just last month, the Washington Post, to its credit, ran an article headline, Chinese surveillance firms build influence in Washington with help from former members of Congress, both Republican and Democrat. This company, the Chinese tech company Hikvision, is directly enabling the Chinese government in their campaign against the Uyghurs. At the same time, it is aggressively lobbying with the former aid of former members of Congress to prevent or remove U.S. government measures limiting the company's ability to do business with American companies and investors. We know the words in Ecclesiastes 4.1, which says, again, I looked, I saw all the oppression that was taking place under the sun. I saw the tears of the oppressed, and they have no comforter. Power was on the side of the oppressors. Power is on the side of the money interests. Power is on the side of those controlling the narrative. Power is on the side of the corporate elites who shamelessly prioritize market access to China above all else. The lobbying efforts I described earlier are not limited to China, but other bad actors as well. Their efforts cloaked in respectability and business as usual in Washington are an affront to human decency. This works against everything you in this room believe in, and they block what you work for. And so what can be done, what must be done, what should be done? We need a law prohibiting former members of Congress and other high-ranking officials from representing companies and government involved with and complicit in genocide and religious persecution. Until such legislation is passed, until such legislation is passed, 
Current members of Congress should not, should not take political contribution from such lobbyists, and nobody in the Congress or the executive branch should meet with these lobbyists. And to aid in this affront, a religious freedom accountability project should be created to serve as a clearinghouse to collect, document, and publicize religious freedom abuses and those involved in these issues. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King said, in the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Are we not the friends of the persecuted? And in the 18th century, British parliamentarian Wilbur Wilberforce said this to his fellow countrymen about the evils of the slave trade. He said, you may choose to look the other way, but you can never say again that you do not know. In 2021, with technology at our fingertips and news available 24 hours a day, we cannot say that we do not know. So what remains to be seen is whether men and women of faith and others of goodwill will accept this challenge regardless of where it leads or will we simply choose to look the other way. The stakes could not be higher. Thank you very much.